night on Finding Avalon, Xanthi holds a fish. We stand on a hill looking at things and Jackson swims through a crevice. It's my birthday. Last week on Finding Avalon, it was my cake day and I got spoilt rotten with all my favorite things. Hey morning guys today is the day that we had planned to leave St Kitts and go to Sabre and the weather is pretty pants <laughs> but we're gonna go anyway Sabre's a, a dodgy one apparently because it's so exposed it's just basically a huge rock in the middle of the Caribbean Sea so not best advised to go there in stormy conditions there's just mooring balls dotted in a couple of places around the island but um, yeah we've got a bit of rain we've got about 20 knots of wind and a bit of rain that doesn't seem to be vanishing anytime soon it's coming and going so uh, yeah off we go I wish that I could see what the hell is wrong with me, but I don't know I'm getting there, but it's getting so hard. I guess I should have known the way to let it go, but I don't know I'm getting there and it's breaking your heart. is a lofty 3,084 feet and has two main villages nestled onto rock shelves. They are the bottom and windward side. All that is good in me but you don't. Now you're getting there but it's getting so hard. I guess you should have known the way to let me go but you don't. Now you're getting there and it's breaking my heart I wanna travel the world with you So last night sucked titties. We were... We're, we're on a mooring in Sabre and about 30 knots of wind was blowing through the anchorage and a old blue swell has just arrived as well so we were rocking and rolling a little bit. Jackson went and slept in the back cabin which seemed to serve him quite well. So yeah we're going to get off the boat. I think from a dinghy safety perspective, <coughs> I think from a dinghy safety perspective it's pretty treacherous going, it's about probably about three miles going around the corner to to the port so I think we'll just take the boat round and, and grab a mooring at the port it's not as beautiful as this place but it's a lot safer and we'll jump in a dinghy I think because of this swell we can't really do any diving or anything so I think for the next couple of days we're just going to do a few hikes and I've heard that Sabre is famous for its generous people and zero crime 
so it's quite fun to hitchhike around here so we might just try and hitchhike all the way up to the windward side of the island there's bakery there Jackson wants to try and there's a pretty epic walk that I want to have a look at We checked in, then had a chat with the chaps at the marine park about the integrity of the moorings. They suggested we throw down our anchor as good measure. So Jackson nipped back to the boat to orchestrate that before we started our big day. enough to hitch a ride with Tito, who lives in the bottom but just happened to be going to Windward side that day. Sitting by the waterfall. Sabre was originally under Spanish rule from the 1500s for about 150 years. The island changed nationality several times since then, and nobody ever attempted to colonise it. Then the Dutch thought they would give it a go, and they nailed it. Sabre has been a territory of the Netherlands since 1816. Sabans live in the clouds, and they're very house proud. Every home is meticulously maintained, every garden perfectly pruned, and many of them have family crypts on their property. rising to 3,084 feet, is the highest point in the nation of the Netherlands. Apparently we were rather lucky to get it on a clear day, so we hung around and soaked up the view until we were engulfed by clouds. What goes up must come down. Later that day we did something we had never before contemplated. We ran away from home and booked a night in a hotel. So we obviously didn't pack anything for overnight because we didn't know we were <laughs> doing this. And reception, I've got all toiletries people have left behind. So I've got some shower gel, some it? shampoo and conditioner, and a pack of little mini baby cards. Is it cool? Oh, it's not ah, too bad. It's perfect, it's just right. So, yeah. Did you get some anti-dandruff? No, he said that if there was anti-dandruff, he would have taken it. The guy at reception, he really likes it. 
And um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna have. But you could use some for your moustache. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. yeah, so we're gonna have a proper shower where not everyone in Anchorage is watching you. I'm really excited. Well, you <laughs> have an actual naked shower. Gucci. Outside, it is raining, but you're inside. So quit complaining, you don't know how lucky you are. It was hard to relax at breakfast looking out upon the white caps dancing all over our anchorage. But we'd had our fun and felt bad for finding Avalon, so we made tracks to go and find our girl. We took the scenic route back to the bottom so that we could explore a little bit more of the island. So from Windward side, we hiked up to Zion's Hill, then took the Sandy Cruise Trail back to the bottom. trying to walk from the windward side to the bottom and we wanted to hitch a little bit of the way and I'm on thumb duty but I broke I broke the tendon that makes me be able to do a thumbs up when I was roller skating <laughs> and it's pathetic The Sandy Cruise Trail was quite the sensory feast, a dense jungle teeming with wildlife. Oh, he's amazing. He's pretty cool. Can we have him? He makes a funny sound. My heart's kind of racing. Because I was about to tell Xanthi about these two big goats that were just up ahead and I was waiting for her and then I went to take one step and this huge snake just like slithered in front of me. I had no <laughs> idea I was standing here for like 30 seconds or something waiting for Xanthi and did not, I had no idea there was a big snake next to me. My lovely Australian boyfriend is very wary of snakes because they have rather venomous snakes in his part of the world. So, necessary caution. So at the moment we are just looking down on Ladder Bay and deciding whether it looks calm enough to anchor. Looks a damn sight calmer than Fort Bay, which is where the boat is now, which we could see from our hotel room. And now we've hiked to the other side of the island. We feel all right about moving the boat around the bay. Definitely looks a little calmer down there. Yeah. Definitely looks more pleasant down there. Yeah. The grass you keep in emerald green. Three hours later, we made it to the bottom and the wildlife well, stayed strong. Well, you could bake a cake and make the cherry a sweet. And then buy yourself a helping hand. Finding Avalon around to Ladder Bay, where the conditions were bearable, it was good to be home. What's up? <laughs> What's up yourself? We slept in till 10am this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Last night. Last night was a bit of a hellish scenario, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was painful. <laughs> the wind dropped. Like we were in consistent 20 knots all day from the same direction and it was fine. And then you would have thought that the wind dropping at night would have been a good thing. But it wasn't because you'd get sort of 10 or 15 seconds 
of wind from all different directions. And so we were just sort of doing circles around the mooring ball. And like every half an hour, the mooring ball would be tight against the side of the boat and just be like bouncing on the side of the boat, just bang, bang. Gust on in three seconds. What? Was I wrong? Yeah. Okay. And then at one point I decided, all right, we need to go fix this up like, because we just stayed side on to the, uh, to the swell. At which point we then realized that now the mooring line was actually wrapped around the keel. So that was a fun adventure at probably 10 o'clock at night, trying to get that out from underneath the keel. Went to bed, woke up again probably like an hour later to pull the mooring ball out again because we'd drifted back over the top of it. Yeah. It's quite an upsetting noise. It's like you can hear it just punching your boat, just beating oh, the shit yeah. out of your boat and you don't want that. And then at midnight, the most almighty biggest smack I've ever heard happened and I thought, oh God, here we go. We've ripped off the mooring and smashed into something. Went outside to investigate. <sighs> Barry the Barracuda. Yum. Yeah, grab something. Oh, be careful. Babe, be so careful. He's huge. Where are we going? Um, well, I'll be honest with you, I'm having a really flat day and I don't want to do anything other than cut up in a ball and eat peanut butter sandwiches. I have done both of those things. I was going to say, we've already done those things. <laughs> Jackson's making me go for a dive and I know it's going to make me feel better, so... I really don't want to, and it's going to be hectic out there because it's windy and there's lots of animals, like lots of barracudas and lots of sharks, so you've got to have your wits about you. I've taken all my jewellery off because I'm not taking any chances. I really do not have my wits about me today, but I have a GoPro and I'm not afraid to use it. It's a fierce weapon. That's my girl. Aquapanda. Aquapanda. 
Ugh, salt therapy. A last save in the sunset, babe. How do you feel about leaving this place? It's a bit of a bittersweet experience, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's a hiker's heaven. A diver's dream and a sailor's bloody nightmare. Yeah, it's this island's definitely taken it out of us. Like mm. it's um just very exposed, isn't it? Very yeah. exposed to the elements. Which just makes it so magical. I mean this island's like something out of a dream. It's two cute little towns in the clouds. And the only way up from the sea is this crazy steep road that they said wasn't even supposed to be built. And then when you get to the top of there, you can just feel the freshness of the atmosphere, like you're standing in a cloud. I love that. I'm glad we stuck it out to go diving today. Yeah, thanks for dragging me along. Now 90 miles. Out of way. We made this video to put you in a good mood, so we hope that did the trick. If it did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're keen to see bonus content from us or just want to support the journey, then why not consider becoming a patron for as little as $2? Join us next week in the British Virgin Islands where we do some housework, snorkel some caves and meet the locals. And a big thank you about the size of Mount Scenery to our patrons who power this whole experience for everyone.